The following video contains spoilers. We suggest watching the episodes alone in the dark. In Soviet Russia, ants think you're awesome! Hello Wolfpack, Cat's back with a dynamic entry into the Goosebumps gallery once more. You know, Awesome Ants has had a mixed reception among the fan base. A lot of people requested this tale of suspense for me since it's considered one of the goofiest adventures from the franchise, with some even branding it as a jump the shark moment for Goosebumps. All I have to say is, seriously? This was one of the R.L. Stein episodes which people thought was too absurd and ridiculous to accept? I am aware that this show does have a good number of bad eggs in the batch, but I never actually viewed this one as one of the show's lamest titles. Not to jump ahead, but yes, this is the one where a kid gets a supernatural ant farm where the ants grow powerful enough to, you guessed it, take over the world. Eventually. Yeah, I know it's kind of dumb, but honestly, I don't think it's the biggest disgrace to Goosebumps. R.L. Stein has had insane settings all the time, so giant bugs attacking people honestly sounds like something our family-friendly Stephen King would do. In fact, I actually recall loving this episode as a kitten. What? I know, right? Cat actually likes an episode with a bad rep? Heretic! Well, I did say I liked it as a kitten, but this is my first time seeing it again as an adult. So maybe my tastes have changed, or maybe it's still a golden egg unfairly tossed aside. What? I do love how amazing these scary worlds and creatures are in horror anthologies, but yes, sometimes a goofy idea is just that. A goofy idea, which does nada for the crowd. However, this tale is also one of the most ambitious projects from the Goosebumps series, which says quite a lot because we all know how low budget and campy this show was. So the very word that Goosebumps truly went all out on an episode does peeve my curiosity. This tale was from Stein's short story collection, Still More Tales to Give You Goosebumps, pretty much revealing that this was made when the show was running low on main books to adapt during the infamous season 3. Uh -huh. So this is another short story that gets the bare bones plot right, but adds a lot more new material in order to make it a complete episode. For all the book purists watching, yes, the episode is extremely faithful to the short story, but it just has more details put in to fill up a TV runtime. On a fun piece of trivia, the Goosebumps writer who worked on this episode actually claimed that he chose adapting this episode over his other choice. The Thumbprint of Doom, since he felt he could do way more with this tale and saw it as a perfect chance to grant kids a fantastic journey into the supernatural compared to the other plot. This guy denied a Goosebump story's opportunity to make it onto the big screen in favor of trying this tale instead. Wow, did you folks think he lived up to his hype and achieved a god-tier Goosebumps nightmare? Or were his dreams of fun squashed like an insignificant insect? Was this episode an amazing adventure of awe? Or an agonizing awful abomination? Well, time to burrow inside and see. This is our wacky review on the love it or hate it Goosebumps tale, Awesome Ants. So, our episode opens up with a kick-ass rap, y'all. We 
enter a Baskin Robbins, where we meet our main character, a chill science kid named Dave Warren, played by Timmy from the Winx Club. Aww. Yes, really, Dave is played by Timmy's voice actor from the Rye dub of Winx. That is kind of cool. Closest we'll ever get to a Goosebumps Winx Club crossover, kiddies. He's chowing down on that sweet Baskin Robbins ice cream with his jive black best friend. Yeah, I know this kid has a name, but let's be honest. Until the rise of Static Shock, these 90s archetypes were just the cliched black best friend. And nothing else. I am the token black guy. I'm just supposed to smile, stay out of the conversation, and say things like, Damn! Shit! And that is whack! To be fair, the acting in this is perfectly serviceable. Even Dave's sister, who has like 5 nanoseconds of screen time, is alright. While this is merely a creature feature with epic monsters, the human actors do deliver their best. Much superior than other episodes. They discuss over what they want to do for their science project for finals, but can't come up with anything. Boy, that moment where you wish your girlfriend Techno would help you out, huh, Timmy? But oh no, their day is ruined by ants! Millions of them! That's disgusting! For the royalty! Oh lord, there's entire hives in here! How the heck did the ice cream man not notice that? I'm so unobservant. What are you looking at? Your arm. <laughs> That's nothing. You should see this guy. <laughs> but the kids are saved. Sort of. By Dale's Dead Bug Extermination, where we meet the one character people criticize the most. The eccentric exterminator, Mr. Lance, who hunts ants. Name is Lance. Trait is ants. Now, in the book, Mr. Lance was actually the class science teacher, with insects being his specialty. But the show remakes him into the local ant expert slash exterminator who protects the town from them gross bugs. Not a bad change at all, but what irks people is how over the top and zany he is. Even by this show's standards. No, this guy's weird. What, him? No. I agree that the guy playing him is very cartoony and silly, but truthfully, I do think he's a tad funny. What? Mr. Lance is just so amusing to watch. His actor is Tom Kenny levels of joy. And what shocks me the most is that he might be one of the rare good adults in the saga. We all know the parents and authority figures suck hard in R.L. Stein's work. So seeing this silly dude who does know more than we think feels like a wild character to enjoy. He's almost like Goosebumps' equivalent of the Verminator, yet also a nice guy towards kids. So who wouldn't love him? In short, I actually like Mr. Lance, since he's so hilarious, epic, and at least makes you remember this episode for more than only the killer ants. Something that helps is that he's not just the typical goofy sadistic exterminator who loves killing. He actually has this weird deep respect for the ants, despite annihilating them. He speaks as a warrior. You're afraid of a few little ants. Just afraid? No. Nah. No, because we're a thousand times bigger than that. <laughs> yeah. Don't underestimate the enemy. He loves ants, and I mean he really loves ants. Yes. Innuendo.
Apparently, there's an ant epidemic going on, and Mr. Lance is the only man who can stop it and save us all. Ant Madness! Only this time, the game is real! He actually drags the boys along to show them how awesome ants are, and lectures them on not doubting their mightiness. Hey, if things have been a little bit different, maybe they're dominant species instead of us. Mr. Lance then impresses the duo by finding and offing the Queen Ant solo. If you eliminate the Queen, <laughs> destroy the nest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love how that palm-sized queen ant bleeds gallons of monster blood? I guess the producers had leftover slime they needed to use up. Like a boss, Lance ends the ant infestation and sends them running, because exterminators are the true heroes. He returns Dave's Masked Mutant comic, advising that the kids study ants from his company, Awesome Ants, to be ready for those bugs just in case. Giving him an idea for science class. Of course, robots! We'll do anything you want. Just call off your giant mechanical ants! The next day, his awesome ants package arrives after just ordering it yesterday. Awesome ants, but I just sent away for this yesterday. Must be a branch of Tony's company. Do when I ordered an ant farm, I meant I wanted the China Ann McLean show, not a literal ant farm. <laughs> The FedEx guys unload a gargantuan aquarium into his backyard, which will serve as his $5 ant farm, upsetting his mother, Jill Valentine. <laughs> no, I'm not kitten. Dave's mom is played by Resident Evil's Jill Valentine. The old school Jill, of course. Sorry, folks, but it's the Jill from the original retro games. None of that remake stuff. How kind of you. Considering Umbrella caused all this in the first place, those liars! That is so awesome that Goosebumps got a Resident Evil character for this story. A silly kid show got the Nemesis Killer. I bet Jill would make a great mom. <laughs> You're right! Jill is pissed, but Dave says it was only $5, so she can't really complain about expenses, so she's chill. I wish 10-foot-long ant farm labs costed 5 bucks back in my day. 90s kids had it easy. Dave soon learns everything about his ants, but does consider skipping a few facts. Here, instruction manual. No way, I have to read all this? All 20 pages? No way! But to be fair, he does learn the big rule. That he has to feed his ants only one insect vitamin per day. And absolutely, absolutely nothing else. So, how long until he screws up? <coughs> Figures. Yep, we're following gremlin rules, where naturally they won't listen, leading to some scary antics. <laughs> he begins his science project, where like dolts they ignore the instructions and feed their pets other stuff anyways. Don't! How can they survive on only one stupid pellet? Here we go. Nice and juicy. How about some Captain Crawl for breakfast? Blam! Take that, go eat worms! You suck! I can't be the only one who didn't see that as a jab at the most hated Goosebumps episode. If that was intentional, showrunners, then kudos. As you can guess, they overfeed those magic ants, where clearly nothing bad will happen. For the royalty! Later that night, Dave reads Too Little Too Late that overfeeding the pets may lead to growth. 
worrying our main man. It's surprisingly good uneasy dread, up until we get this blatant fake out, which the show fails at. Yeah, it's not the ants, it's not the ants, it's not the ants, it's not the ants, it's not the ants. Want a cookie? I just baked them. Hey, what do you know? It's not the ants. Dave decides to get some rest, yet little does he know that the ant effects have only begun. Oh no, they found the Photoshop! That morning, the ants start tearing apart Jill's house. Wow, how'd these get in here? David, do something! Oh, come on, Jill. You're begging the little boy for help? You've handled much worse problems than tiny bed bugs. <laughs> You're right. And I must admit, it's pretty funny how uncaring the kids are about their ant infestation. With Dave filming it for class and his sister wanting out of this mess. Well, that's it. I'm moving in with the neighbors. <laughs> Alright, some funny bits in this are pretty good. Unlike Bad Hair Day, the one-liners are a little more fitting. There's also a pretty chilling scene where Dave notices that his ant farm's lock is busted, meaning the ants are growing stronger. It's kind of eerie since the ants can go and return as they please now. Not the premium nightmare fuel, but very foreboding. Naturally, Dave ignores his ant problem and uses his findings for class, where we see that his project was an A-plus success at school. But Lance is pissed. Wait, why is the exterminator at his school? In the book, this made sense because he was the teacher. But for some reason, the town's exterminator was allowed to show up at a random kid's science class to watch the show and tells? Huh? That makes no sense. Jeez, don't you just hate it when random people intrude on your life just to give you useless stupidity? Chat! I found this floor mat on the floor! Ugh. <laughs> Lance came by to, I guess, see if his student became the master, but he's upset at Dave's inaccuracies. He calls Dave a liar because it's impossible that his house ants were that big, sinisterly implying that something is up. They're fake, and you know it. They are not, they're real. Can't be, because if those ants were real, we wouldn't be around for long. <laughs> Dave sees that Lance is onto something, since his ants keep breaking out and steal his food. Holy cow, those ants shattered a cinder block and dragged a larger animal to their pit? That is unnerving. This isn't your typical everyday antness. This is advanced antness. He locks the ants up again since fifth time's the charm, and he finally calls the awesome ants company. But it won't do him any good, as the ants have achieved maximum scariness. Defend the colony! Defend the colony! Defend the colony! It's also pretty scary when he tells the workers he screwed up by overfeeding the bugs, where they only tell him to run. Now. I've got a problem. I've been feeding your ants hot dogs and stuff, and now they're- You didn't read the instructions, did you? You've got to get out of there right now, young man! Oh. Hello? I'm sorry, the number you've dialed isn't available. Please leave a message after the tone. Quite unsettling. And right on dramatic cue, the ants attack, revealing that they are growing every passing second. I know the effects are cheesy, but I love this small bit where you can clearly see the ant going from toy size straight to almost the size of a puppy. That is super horrifying, and does a good job showing us that the bugs are indeed getting more and more massive. 
I guess now's a good time to discuss if ants are scary. Stein has done a decent job at taking random objects of the week and transforming them into scary plot devices, but some naysayers didn't quite get into ants being one of them. I disagree completely. While ants wouldn't be my go-to scary animal, the concept of making them into horror monsters does work. Especially since ants are the type of creatures who work in swarms and large groups, which outnumber the small amount of characters in our ensemble. Insects are almost always selected for horror stories, mainly because they work together in swarms, making up enough of a high number to overwhelm beings larger than it, such as people. Their nauseating biology up close also increases the terror of them because of the basic ick factor. Getting eaten by zombies is one thing, but getting eaten by millions of tiny bugs biting and burrowing into your body has a more gruesome vibe to it. Ants are also well known for sharing a single goal. They're all drones who serve the queen ant and basically share an almost hive mind. Their thoughts are all the same, and the drones are more well-coordinated to work together in teams, much better compared to other insects. While their goals are simply seeking food, burrowing, working together, and serving a queen, they're one of the few insects who practically form an army. So the idea of that army growing into the dominant species makes them hella horrifying. Much creepier than the pathetic flailing of the stupid worms. One monster is bad enough, but imagine thousands of that group, functioning as a dedicated unit, coming after you. Ants are a simple species, yet make unique monsters when thirsty for blood. They may not be top of the food chain, however, ants could be perfectly built as phenomenal creepy crawlies. This has been another Pointless Trivia with Professor Kitty Cat. Shut up, house. Adding to that, the killer ants are made a thousand times more intimidating thanks to the special effects. These might honestly be the best special effects I have ever seen from Goosebumps. Like, wow, they are good. Even the 90s CGI is nearly impressive. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't say they're groundbreaking or anything on par with modern flicks, but considering that this is Goosebumps, they might just be the grandest TV monster designs I have ever seen from them. The show uses solid giant ant puppets in multiple sizes, covers them in slimy moist, and control them just off screen. But wow, they are freaking cool. I can't believe I'm saying this, but this Goosebumps tale might honestly have this show's highest, greatest special effects and giant monster designs. <laughs> You're right! So much work was put into them, and they really did film the actors against these unique puppets. I'm shocked the series dedicated this much effort to bring this idea to life. People didn't like this? There are literally kaiju-sized ants tearing up the world and burrowing all throughout the city. That's so nightmare-inducing, and much better than a stupid bunny cracking wise, or zombie demon cats turning idiots into werecats. Awesome Ants has a much scarier tale to tell, and the producers pull it off wonderfully. Giant killer ants have grown strong enough to take over the world! Of course! Though, as much praise as I can award these effects, the show still kind of disappoints by refusing to show Dave fighting back. Aw, come on, Goosebumps. You can't show a giant bug dying on a kid show. I suppose showing bug death is just too dark for all you kids out there. Dave escapes to find help, but everyone is gone. Somehow. Oh jeez, giant mutant monsters are out there with Jill Valentine? 
You don't want to know where this is going. Yes, in your window. Dave wisely goes to find the exterminator, Mr. Lance, for aid, because, as we all know, the exterminators are the real everyday heroes. Take my hand, Bobby. The ants will swarm on me. What if they don't? Oh, they will. They've been waiting to get a piece of me for 15 years. Come and get it, boys. Dang, those exterminators are the toughest SOBs on the street. Pay your respects, kids. I do love how this kid manages a smart decision in a horror story, but sadly he's too late, cause the ants have already colonized. Ugh, no joke, that reveal still creeps me out today. The nice touch where that ant, which we think is a toy model, decorating the exterminator's building, revealing that it's a real giant ant resting there, is so haunting. I'm taking my nap! <laughs> Sadly, Mr. Lance is dead, and soon Davy will be too, as giant ants surround the joint. What am I gonna do? For the royalty! While this is cool and all, does nobody see this? Nobody in the entire town spots the ginormous killer ants taking over the city? How do you miss that? Mommy, those people look like ants! Oh, that's because we're landing in the kingdom of the ants! <laughs> <laughs> I got you, I'm just kidding. Would you mind keeping it down? I'm trying to read. <laughs> Though, like I said, these ant effects are amazeballs. The giant ants lifting up Davy and dragging him out is the highlight of this nightmare. Yep, in usual Stein fashion, the kid hero fails and dies. <laughs> Probably at home, beating his wife. Oh! I believed in you! But it was all just a dream. Dave and his fam are perfectly A-OK. -okay. There never were giant ants eating him, he has no large ant colony, and life is still normal. Dave just had a brief trip into the nightmare room. It's all good, it's all good. But when everything seems to be coming up Millhouse, we get to our twist ending. Huh? He sees those vitamin pellets he once fed to his ants are apparently his only source of food now. Because Dave and humankind are really the pets to the mega ants. Dun dun dun! <laughs> yes, in reality, humans are inferior pets kept in cages, while the ants are the true overlords towering over their meek subjects the whole time. The insects are the true masters in this universe. What, you guys don't remember the Great Insect Wars where the ants rose up as the dominant species? I remember. Because I was there. What are you waiting for? Destroy it! Destroy the last pellet! No. My kind has been oppressed since the dawn of time. Now, no longer. Manny! Manny! Yeah, 
that was a weird Father's Day. So yeah, they put a rather unique spin on the it was all just a dream ending by revealing that the dream was Dave's escapism from the harsh reality that ants rule the world and mistreat him and his fam as their lowly pets. Now, in the book, the twist ending was mostly the same, yet they show us how the ants conquered the world and infer that they forced humans into their old ant farms because of Dave overfeeding them until they grew into kaiju. Dave was implied to be the cause for the ant uprising. The show is slightly different because they hint that this was the way their world has always been and Dave imagined the whole thing to avoid his reality. I don't think it's that big a change to get angry over. Especially since it packs the same punch the short had. Humans and ants switch roles over who's top species in both. But the episode makes it scarier since, once again, the effects are mega horrifying, and it does come across as one of the show's most impactful twist endings. I totally love this big finish. Since it's scary, it's as clever as a Twilight Zone episode, it delivers something very close to the book's feel, and it does feel like the episode truly earns coming full circle with Dave treating his imaginary ants as beneath him, only to get a dark reminder that this is his own position. A heavy lesson on cherishing your current place in life, since you might never know how good you really have it. Hmm, I'm intrigued! <laughs> Huh, so I guess this episode is a better version of two Goosebumps episodes. Go eat worms and don't go to sleep. Nicely done, awesome ants. Why, even Mr. Lance is here as a normal average Joe who worships the giant ants. I dreamt that things were different. And ants were so small you could fit a thousand of them in one hand. And it was your job to kill them. <laughs> don't let them hear you say that. Oh, for crying out loud, Lance went from an epic exterminator into a bigger sellout than Kent Brockman. And I, for one, welcome our new insect overlords. I'd like to remind them that as a trusted TV personality, uh, I can be helpful in rounding up others to toil in their underground sugar caves. Yep, this is the way life has always been. Humans are nothing more than animals who compete with each other in life struggling to survive, and the whole episode was Dave's wishful thinking if humanity wouldn't be at the bottom of the food chain. This episode closes out on Dave getting back to work as the mountain ants laugh at their pitiful subjects. And even the bugs laughing is kind of disturbing. It's such a bitter end. <laughs> So that was the infamous episode, Awesome Ants. What do I think? I legit do not understand the hatred behind it because this was plain awesome. I seriously believe that this was one of the best stories from Goosebumps. It was that impressive and entertaining. Yeah, I know the concept is kind of dumb and a lot of this is over-the-top absurdity. But a part of me also respects this episode for embracing its silly ant madness and working it into a great narrative. Most of this episode is revealed to have been a dream, and it's not too awkward to the point of soiling upon the overall journey, so I'm not at all mad at anything in this. Some viewers think the episode being a dream invalidates most of it, but I disagree. Since the writing does drop hints leading up to it and adds a grimmer lair to the plot's ending, 
The big twist at the end is a colossal payoff, and the show's effects surprisingly try harder in this than on any other episode I've seen in this show. I wish all of Stein's Goosebumps episodes tried this hard on their production. How did people not like this? I've heard the concept being too dumb for folks, but have we even been watching the same show? Stein has had killer dummies, zombie towns, alien invaders, talking bunnies, and magic remotes. Yet giant ants were too hard to swallow? Heck, we've seen Stein tackle giant killer kaiju before! So this story fits in perfectly with all the other Goosebumps episodes for me. I know Goosebumps isn't exactly high art, but this was an exceptional scary story from this series. It has decent acting, a simple enough plot to follow, one of the darkest twist endings from this saga, is mostly faithful to the short story, outclasses lesser fail bombs which struggled at these grand scale concepts, delivers a shockingly nice, harsh lesson, and I know I bragged about this before, but I'll say it again, some freaking awe-inspiring special effects. The giant ants are horrifying, and the show really makes them stand out as some of the gnarliest beasts to infest your nightmares. It promised kids giant monsters all out attacking, and it delivered. However, there's also a thought-provoking ending attached too, which does work. Our main character assumed he was above the ants and didn't have to understand them, making him a bad pet owner and ultimately causing his own downfall. Yeah, it's all a dream, but the twist reveals that the ants are the ones persecuting humans and treating them as inferiors, showing us precisely why Mr. Lance's grim warning should have been taken seriously. Hey, if things have been a little bit different, they'd be the dominant species instead of us. You're thinking of things that seem maybe just a little bit different. We'd be the dominant species instead of them. I may be breathing in way too much into this kid show, but I think the ants laughing at the humans beneath them kind of makes you realize that you shouldn't take your own life for granted because at least you're not a real small insect who could be stepped on and toyed with at any moment. A rather existential idea to appreciate from this goofy children's horror series. Of course, even if I'm wrong, this tale is still a fun, scary, and creative horror story to enjoy. Awesome Ants is not at all terrible, and truly worthy of showing off why Goosebumps was a beloved horror icon thanks to all the hard work poured into it, the riveting story, and reaching the high bar for fun creature features. Thanks to actually making ants awesome. So, I grant this skin-crawling horror a gold skull. I strongly recommend seeing it because it's just plain amusing and is one of the few Goosebumps episodes where their production values are at their most dazzling. The Goosebumps writers fought to adapt this tale, and by George, they gave us gold. Outstanding special effects, grisly giant bugs, gripping suspense, an epic horror plot, and even Jill Valentine. What's not to love? Awesome Ants is just a plain engaging creature feature, fun for kids and adults since it really knows how to dig into your nightmares. I'm your host, Catastrophe, and I want to remind you all to always thank your local exterminator, since they're the only ones protecting us from those gross, vile bugs. What was that? Oh, uh, uh, nothing, Master. Up and Adam, it's Adam Ant! His strength, his might, his speed, his fight! He's Adam Ant, that tiny ant, and his atomic power! As what it takes and always makes the vilest villain cower! He's rough, he's tough, and bad guys yell enough! When he is 
up and Adam Adam Ant. Name is Lance. Traitor's ants. <laughs>